staying longer than usual. Yeah. Okay. Great. The recording has started. Uh, maybe Arun, could you lead us in a word of prayer, and then we will proceed. Sure, Let me pray. Lord, we just want to say thank you for blessing this another new day, another new week to learn your word. Lord, Father, we just want to say thank you, Lord, for being the penalty of sin for us, Lord. And Lord, uh, help us all to uh, experience and understand your love, Lord, Father, as we journey with your wonderful word. And Lord, uh, help us all to soak, uh, soak deep and richly in your word. And help us, uh, so my father, will focus. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, there's an issue with uh, Aren's uh, audio. So let me just go ahead and complete uh, that prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, Lord, for this opportunity to uh, hear your word. We pray that, Holy Spirit, you will um, bring us revelation and uh, strengthen us, Lord, in our walk with you and enable us, Lord, to um, Lord, build up and edify the body of Christ. We give you thanks and praise. We commit ourselves, Lord, every single person in this class and myself as well, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you, Arun. Thank you for leading. And uh, yeah, I understood uh, something probably went wrong in your connection. So uh, that's fine. Mm, yeah, no issues. Uh, so before I get into this morning's class, just want to know if you if you all can hear me well without any disturbance, or can you hear additional sound? It's just my voice. Okay, wonderful. Clear. Yeah, clear. Okay, great. No, because uh, right outside my home, there's a lot of um, uh, noise, some festivals, so they have music which they have put. Uh, so I did not want that also to, you know, get into this call. Anyway, I'm happy that it's fine. So we were in um, Hebrews, uh, Hebrews chapter 10. And uh, we saw how the Lord Jesus was the fulfillment of whatever we have seen in the old covenant practices. We saw how the Lord Jesus is the high priest forever in the true tabernacle in heaven and that he himself has become our um, perfect sacrifice which was made once for all. So it gave us great clarity on what it is that the Lord Jesus has done um, through his redemptive work. So that is where we work. And in this passage, we also saw um, uh, how we can enter into the presence of God boldly because our sins, um, because, you know, Jesus has made, uh, um, uh, like he has uh, paid up, for our sins, that is one thing. But also, we see that he does not remember our sins. Okay, So God doesn't remember our sins because of uh, the perfect work that the Lord Jesus has done. And uh, which is why, through the mercy of God, through the forgiveness of God and the grace of God, we can enter God's presence boldly uh, and by the blood of Jesus. And we talked a little bit about, you know, the, the blood and what it has done for us that now, uh, you know, we can we can experience we can experience the blessings of a new kingdom and which is why we are also encouraged to draw near to god draw near to god and it says uh, with full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water we uh, saw how we have been cleansed on the inside by the work of the holy spirit and also our bodies you know an act of washing uh, as far as believers in Christ are concerned, we know that water baptism is is what we uh, talk about. So for the Jews, you know, there, there were many practices, many washing uh, ceremonies that they needed to engage in. But obviously here, because it's being addressed to the believers, the context is water baptism. So 
uh, in this way, we recognize that, you know, we now have access to God and we can enter his presence in a free way. And therefore, the believers are being encouraged to not give up on their faith, to keep holding on. And we saw how there is an encouragement to uh, serve one another, love one another, because what happens during periods of discouragement, disappointment, we tend to avoid community. We um, prefer to sort of, you know, just um, uh, wallow in our own, uh, in our own thoughts and in, in our own uh, you know, like we, we just want to be alone. Okay. Uh, but then we see how there is an importance in coming together as God's people. And uh, uh, one is being encouraged through that fellowship and the other is to encourage one another. So verse 26, we'll pick up from there because uh, we didn't look in detail from verse 26, so we'll we'll see from there. So here, uh, the uh, writer is talking about those who sin willfully. Okay. Now, obviously, sin itself is an act of our will most of the time. Maybe by ignorance, sometimes we could commit sin. But in general, we give into our flesh and... Uh, uh, we know what we are doing. So sin itself is an act of our will. However, you know, uh, once we have sinned, we know that the work of the Holy Spirit is such that he calls us to repentance. In John 16, we see that he convicts us of righteousness, of uh, um, what righteousness? One second, let me just quickly look it up. Judgment. Okay, sorry, I digressed over there. Oh, yeah, sin, righteousness, and judgment. Okay. Uh, yep. Yeah. John 16 and 8. It says uh, uh, sin, righteousness, and the coming judgment. So that is the work of the Holy Spirit. Then what is this will willfully sin? When we receive that conviction, the sincere believer who wants to preserve his relationship with God and who wants to increase in, in his uh, walk with God, what will such a believer do? When conviction happens, what are we supposed to do? Anyone? Let's say we've done something against God and the uh, Holy Spirit is, you know, uh, like you feel that pricking in your heart. So what are we supposed to do? Confess and repent from the sin. Yes, very good, very good, Thomas. So confess and repent. That is the normal Christian life we need to do whatever it takes to preserve our relationship with god but when you say a person is willfully sinning it means that even after the conviction of the holy spirit the person is not yielding to it no repentance okay but continue to sin and we have seen when we talked about the mind and how satan um uh, attacks our mind, we said that if a believer will renew their mind and they will walk in God's ways, then that influence can be broken. But when the influence is not broken, you know, it moves further into oppression. Then it, you know, goes uh, uh, 
goes to the higher level where it becomes a stronghold in that person's life so sin as ephesians 4:26 uh, uh, you know 27 it says it really makes us open the door or give the devil a foothold it's like satan has a small entry in our backyard and that's enough for him to pounce on the entire house so a person who is sin willfully sinning is that kind of a person who is totally unrepentant now what does the bible say about such a person it is said that <laughs> there they have received the knowledge of the truth but there is no longer a sacrifice for sins jesus has paid the price but what's happening is it's as if that is not applicable anymore because repeatedly repeatedly you know the person is engaging in sinful habits and um we are warned and told for such a person there will be a fearful expectation of judgment even now when we look forward to judgment as believers um we have a sense of awe and reverence uh, finally god is going to uh, you know uh, look into our life and um, assess whether we first of all whether we have accepted christ yes we have and then now that we have accepted christ thank god we will be taken into the presence of god into heaven but god will still you know uh, see our works and based on that you know the rewards in heaven are uh, kept for us so it's in a way sort of a joyful expectation which we have as believers but a believer himself or herself who is willfully sinning will have a fearful expectation of um god's anger and judgment coming you know in a in a in a sort of a um uh, condemning way Okay. Uh, not because God has done it to the believer, but if you recall, going back to our passage in Hebrews six, where a believer has rejected, they have rejected the cleansing work of the blood, they have rejected the sacrifice of Jesus, they have rejected the the uh, convicting voice of the Holy Spirit, so on and so forth. so the willfully sinning believer has to face the consequences and we are told that they will have this um this this uh, uh fear of god's judgment uh, it it is like looking forward to an angry you know an angry teacher or or an angry parent you have you have they told you not to do something and you've done it so how do you you know um, face them so that kind of a thing uh, and and so we have to be really careful and uh, also you see that uh, we are told that believers who live their lives like this it is as if they are making the work of christ um like what do you it, it's like the value of that work in their eyes it's diminished and therefore the power of what has been done is not coming into their life so you see such strong words he's using he's saying mm, uh thought worthy who has trampled the son of god under foot it's it's like that as if this believer has um walked on or disrespected jesus uh, being crucified on the cross and counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing but again no value to the blood of jesus and we are also told that such a person it's as if they have insulted the spirit of grace so it's really a warning similar to acts chapter uh, hebrews chapter 6 then we are told that you know we need to we need to remember you now while we talk about um, god god's nature being a nature of grace and love and mercy and peace he at the same time is also a god of justice and righteousness so how can god shut his eyes and say that everything is correct he will never do that and so the believer is being warned of not uh, of um, you know 
this kind of uh, a lifestyle and uh, told that the lord will judge his people and to also remember that it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living god or in other words as i told earlier you know uh, somebody who is uh, disobeying a child that is disobeying the teacher uh, or or a parent and let's say they've got lot of grace lot of opportunities and still they have done the same thing which the teacher said don't do it you know it's scary isn't it uh, so in the same manner it is fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living god we would never want to be found in that situation so that is a warning for us uh, yeah so we continue to um, see here verse 32 onwards um, that the believers they are now you know being encouraged that you endured a great struggle with sufferings um, partly when while you were made a spectacle both by reproaches and tribulations so you know they've been through they've been through a lot of challenges um, because they have been through these things you know he is uh, encouraging them that uh, you have something better coming up okay um you also have a reward in heaven so you know this is uh, like an encouragement to all believers when we go through so many tribulations you know sometimes we wonder how, what is the value of what i'm going through god can you not give me a way of escape you see just by virtue of the fact that we are on the earth we are not immune to difficulties trials tribulations and more so persecutions so when we go through these things one thing is under our control and that is our attitude we can have a good attitude simply because you know it is it a good thing to uh, be afflicted by a trouble no it's not nobody wants it but if at all i am going through it you know i can know that if i go through it righteously um then i have a possession inheritance you know for uh, for myself in heaven god will reward me according to that and not just that we will study the book of james okay we when we study that book we will understand that uh, externally something It, valuable um, will be our possession but at the same time our character will also be built up when we go through difficulties in a uh, righteous way so for a struggling believer here is the if you want to summarize what the writer of the hebrews is saying he's saying you all are going through a challenging time uh, don't get so discouraged that you let go of your faith because if you let go of your faith remember you have to face god and everything that he did you're making it look worthless so don't let go of your faith on the other hand he's encouraging them we saw even when he spoke about uh, falling away in hebrews 6 nicely he covered up with an encouragement and he said but your labor is not in vain so even now he's saying it is it it is a um, fearful thing to fall into the hands uh, of the living god and then he goes into encouraging he said you've been through lot of things but remember that you will get something from god for your faithfulness and verse 35 again he he encourages them he says don't cast away your confidence which has great reward so our faith and our confidence in god um will fetch us his blessings and his reward so we must not let go so now he introduces a term and we will look at this term little more in uh, hebrews chapter 12 he says you need endurance okay what is endurance endurance is the capacity to um bear up under pressure okay now if we take up uh, let's say a 400 meters um uh, uh sprint usually 
people who are participating in 100 meters will quite easily finish it. Okay, one round, it's over. Great. But somebody who's doing a 400 or an 800 or a cross country, when you are going into a longer race, initially you have that excitement that you want to uh, win it and you, know, you, you will make it. So it's somewhat easier. But once that excitement is gone, there comes the test. There comes the pressure. What pressures? Physical tiredness, exhaustion, uh, also mental stress. Will I make it? Will I not make it? Will I get the prize? Will I not get the prize? So, uh, you know, all those things, internal, external, lots of pressures are there. When there is pressure, you're still in the race. That is called as endurance. It's, it's getting tougher and tougher, but, you know, you're there. You're there. You're bearing that. You're going forward. You're going forward. You go. So it's as if the people who can endure through that rough patch are the ones who will actually make it and they will fulfill God's plan for their life. So that's what he's saying. Just because you're going through a rough patch now, don't give up. You need endurance. Because after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. So God is faithful. He will give you the promise. So he continues to encourage them. And he reminds them uh, that, uh, you know, it's just a little while. And uh, God has promised that he will come. He who has promised, he will come. He will not delay and that the just shall live by faith. So we have to continue forward living by faith. Don't get discouraged. And also remember that God is not pleased with those who give up. So God doesn't um, you know, give up on the faith. So he says anyone who draws back, draws back is you just give up on your faith. Uh, God is not pleased with that kind of an attitude. But again, you know, he it's it's very nice. It's uh, showing a very pastoral side of the writer because he wants, um, he is strict. Uh, you know, it's like giving a nice beating, but then, you know, telling the child, okay, okay, you know, I did it because I, I, you, what you did is not correct. And um, you can, I know that you can do well. So kind of encouraging and, uh, you know, the ultimate goal is encouragement. The ultimate goal is to make sure that the child learns a good behavior and, uh, you know, child becomes a good citizen and uh, a good human being. So in the same manner, you know, this writer here and there, he, he uh, unleashes, you know, his, his, um, his anger. But not not in a sense that, okay, you are like this, uh, you are not good enough, not in that manner, but that uh, you seem to be tending towards discouragement. How can you do that? Don't be discouraged because, you know, God is not pleased if you draw back, if you fall away, it's very, it's impossible for people like that to come back. Okay. So all that, he just adds it there and gives them the very real picture of this is the reality. Be warned. But soon after, he comes back you know, in a soothing way and says, but I know that you, we, we will speak of better things about you. you know? why, should we, uh, why should we even think that you will draw back or that you will fall away? You will not fall away, I'm sure. So even now, he is concluding here uh, by saying, but we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. Meaning, you will not fall away. I know that uh, you're going to do well and you're going to come out victorious. So that is the encouragement. Okay, so now we will move on to the very famous uh, chapter... Uh, not just in the book of Hebrews, but also uh, in the Bible itself, you could say, Hebrews 11. This is a passage that talks about faith. So before I move into that, 
I just want to ask all of us because we know uh, different people in the Word of God. Can you all? Uh, there are five people on the call right now. So can you all just tell me uh, who is your uh, example of faith? It can be anybody from the Bible. Okay, who is your example of faith? Okay, Aaron says Abraham. Okay, it's uh, Paul for Siddharth, uh, Abraham for Kannan, and uh, for Dev it is Moses. So, um, can any one of you tell me why this whoever you have chosen is is your uh, favorite person of faith? You're all on the call, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. So anyone, anyone, if you could share why uh, you consider this particular individual. I'd like to talk about Noah. Uh, okay. Yes, many examples are there in uh, uh, Hebrews 11. But some people get their attention because when Noah, uh, God asked to build a, an ark, and uh, in in those times no rain at all, the, the water should the earth. But Noah, I don't know how he believed God and he built build an ark. But that kind of faith, uh, uh, that's the obedience of his faith, he, uh, taken from him. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Thomas. That's so true. You know, when you've not seen something to believe that that is going to happen, um, it's not easy, isn't it? Um, so different ones of you uh, for many such reasons, you know, that each of these people believed God for something something uh, that was not easy. So for that, you have chosen these names. Kanan adds, um, so thank you, Thomas. Thank you for sharing. And Kanan says, uh, Abraham, uh, because of Abraham's obedience before God. Okay, So that is the reason he has chosen Abraham. So let's get into this passage here that talks about many, many um, people of God, both men and women. And we shall understand why uh, each of them has been included in this passage. Okay, so yeah, let's just get started. Yeah, so it begins by saying that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay, so we begin with a uh definition of faith you could say now um this faith has been lived out by many people in scripture already but we are given an opportunity to understand what is faith what is the meaning of faith so faith is a spiritual substance because it is spiritual um you know it, it is something you could you could i mean i'm just using the word like uh, you you have it internally okay now faith is to do with things in our lives and we are told that uh, it is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen so certain things let's let's say let's call these things as i'm just using you know maybe the promises of god there are certain promises of god which we know are going to take place we hope for them and in our spirit 
we have faith or we have the substance the spiritual substance remember we have the spiritual substance inside or a knowing or a surety inside that this is going to take place you're hoping that this is going to take place and the evidence of things not seen it is a surety that things are going to take place another very good way of understanding this is the in the amplified you know it says uh, faith is the title deed title deed is let's say you're going to make a large purchase it could be a land or it could be a very big equipment okay uh, when you go to pick up something like that generally what people do is they will ask for a down payment and uh, uh, once you know you've you've made that you have um, discussed and the papers are signed they will give you a title deed which shows that that particular place belongs to you okay now uh, you don't have that you are, have still not stepped into the land but is that land yours yes that product has still not that equipment has still not reached your house but is that yours yes because you can show a paper or you know title deed and say that i already have it now people might question where is it you're just showing a paper where is it where is it i can't see any land or equipment title deed that's what faith is so in our spirit there's a title deed of things hoped for the promises of god you know the um, the rewards of god things that we hope for and we know about the biblical hope that it is not the english hope because uh, again if you go back to the greek here now you would get a sense that the hope which is being spoken of here it it is sure it is a sure thing but the hope in english the interpretation of that word is more like i hope it rains today if it rains it's okay if it doesn't rain it's okay you know but there is a surety as far as um the the promises of god are concerned so that is faith we don't see it right now but we know that god is at work and it will happen so that is faith you know what is faith faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not yet seen and we are told that by this the elders obtained a good testimony so in this passage you see so many different names why are they all here they have a good testimony we have something to learn something godly to learn from their lives because they were all people who carried this substance in their lives and notice it's told by faith we understand it's talking about the creation of the world that the world was framed by the word of god now again we might have uh, uh, this question sounds very blind to me where is logic you know where is science where is evidence mm, that by faith the worlds were uh, by faith we understand that the worlds were formed by the word of god how can god's word form the world it is through faith that one understand so uh, i would like to put it this way we don't we don't um know how to explain many things you know at at some point in time but we believe by faith because uh, you know we know that god is alive and we know that faith is is um a, a reality so we believe god first because obviously he is the creator and he is the one who knows the science behind everything else and the evidence or the logical scientific evidence to that could 
catch up later or maybe there are things that we may never get the explanation for but we believe god because we know that he is true and his word is true um and you see here it says by faith we understand how can you understand faith people take it as blind if there is faith don't talk about understanding not necessarily you know there is a spiritual understanding you know, which god gives us through faith it does not mean that it is illogical or that you know it is blind we can definitely say that we are unable to explain at this point in time but the spiritual faith that we are talking about it's a real thing it's a real substance and uh, by faith we understand now moving on we'll start talking about the uh, names of different people at any point if you have questions you can always stop me and ask me okay so we just discussed faith now about abel no abel in the bible you don't read about him more than once he's a brother of um, cain son of adam and eve and uh, he came to offer to the lord a sacrifice now god accepted abel's sacrifice but not cain's so only once he sacrificed and look at this he has been included as a man of faith because you know what was the difference between the sacrifice of uh, abel and cain people think that cain brought to god vegetables maybe that's why god was not happy and you know abel gave meat but no one act in the life of a man is precious in the sight of god because you see here that abel offered by faith okay so when we do something for god it could be a small act of faith maybe you 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 give to the lord or you give to other brothers and sisters in christ or you went to encourage somebody they're going through a rough patch you went to encourage them or you know your pastor asked you to come and share god's word you went and shared god's word or anything anything you see here that abel he offered a sacrifice to god one action but why did it become so excellent that god did not forget it he included it in the bible it was more excellent than cain because there was one ingredient in it and that is faith so whatever we do if we do it with faith god accepts it god is pleased by it and you see here that abel is called as a righteous man just like abraham no abraham believed god and it was credited to him as righteousness or accounted to him as righteousness so what abel did he also did it by faith he believed and therefore he was counted as righteous and god testifying of his gifts or a sacrifice and we see though he be dead still speaks okay now um sometimes we would look at the lives of some people who are probably dead and gone now but when you see what they have done for god or by faith those actions they still glorify god they still speak you know god is great and god is good uh that's a blessed life we all can also be encouraged to do that that we live our lives in such a way that uh every action let it be an action of faith and uh let it still speak when we are gone you know maybe some of us 
you leave behind you know till today we sing some songs isn't it the people who wrote those songs are no longer there but those songs it sp- still speaks faith in god people have written books it still speaks you know, people have uh, built up ministries people have um, uh, you know built up uh, buildings where where god's work is continuing medical places where god's work is continuing so many things so i'm talking about some of the big things maybe some small things even like when i think about uh, my grandmother she was a believer in god and she used to tell us stories she's gone now but her life has made such an impact her act of faith those were the early seeds of faith you know in in my lives in my life and in the lives of uh, my brothers and sisters so every act of faith it's not about big or small it's about whether there is faith in it or not and that is the example of abel he's mentioned once in the bible but you see that he's included in uh, hebrews 11 because of the faith with which he did that one action of op- offering a sacrifice to god now coming to enoch enoch what is special about enoch what is special about enoch anyone familiar what happened to enoch okay dev says he did not die that's true so we are told that he was taken away because of his faith so he did not see death that's unusual that's unusual because we just saw in hebrews 9 that it is appointed for man to die once but there uh, is a person like enoch who did not taste death okay um and how could that happen because of the faith which he carried and we are told that without faith it is impossible to please him all the people who have pleased god have done it by faith now if i um live my life without faith and my actions have no faith uh, i cannot expect you know god to be pleased by my life and uh, so let us come to the lord with faith let us believe um that god is the one who he claims to be and that god is also a rewarder and sometimes you no know, we tend to be very self righteous where we say that god i will believe you mm, and i know that uh, you know i will go through a lot of difficulty because i i will believe you but i know there'll be no um reward there's only dif- struggles uh, because i've chosen to trust in god but look at verse 6 here hebrews 11:6 it says that he who comes to god must believe first of all it is it is impossible to please without faith it is impossible to please god he who comes to god must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him so god is a rewarder so when we live our lives and we do our acts of faith remember that god is faithful maybe right now we are not seeing the results don't get worried about it but surely god will bless us surely you know things will uh, uh, take place by god's you know blessing on our lives so that faith we have to maintain and that is what keeps us uh, running that is what keeps us doing the work of god okay uh, and particularly in the tough time so keep that faith now coming to noah what was so beautiful about noah's noah's faith you know as um, thomas pointed out noah believed that there is going to be a flood and he built an ark um and we are told that he was warned divinely warned of things not yet seen which is the flood see noah could have rejected this warning but noah's faith is like the faith which james speaks about faith without action is dead but 
If you say you have faith, then show me your action. No one knew that what God was saying was true. And so if a flood is coming, then with godly fear, he was moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household. And one more thing. Remember we said that these were the shadows. Uh, it's very interesting. You can also go back and read, but be careful that you don't over interpret, you know, um, uh, some people read between the lines and they come up with some new, new interpretation, which does not have scriptures backing them up. But then uh, if you would say that Noah's Ark, it's like the Lord Jesus Christ. What is unfolding before us? You know, it's a corrupt world with sin and um, destruction is unfolding. And we know as we tend towards the end times, there will be much more destruction. But what did God do in the midst of that? He forewarned us that these things are going to happen. And he sent the Lord Jesus Christ for the saving of mankind. So Jesus is like that ark. When we are saved, you know, we um, uh, we are protected in that ark. Okay, so just a way of understanding uh, what what is told in the Old Testament and how you know the Lord Jesus can be seen even in those passages. So Noah believed God, and we are told that uh, through his faith, he even condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness of God. So that is the testimony of Noah. He was a man of faith. Now, going to um, Abraham. Abraham uh, obeyed when he was called to go out to a place where he would receive an inheritance. So we know about the life of Abraham um, that it really, it really required faith for someone to step out. When you don't have the final destination in mind, how many of us we have traveled without knowing where we are going? Anybody? Have you prepared for two or three days, packed your bags um, and, uh, you know, just left home? If your family members asked you or friends asked you, where are you going? Your answer would be, I don't know. Anybody? Have we done that? No. We have never done that. But in the case of Abraham, God told him, go to a place that I'm going to show you. And Abraham packed his bags and he went where? Don't know. It takes faith to trust God like that. And no wonder Abraham is known as the father of faith. So he went following after God and he had no clue where God was leading him and you know he dwelt it is said in foreign country with his sons Isaac and Jacob because they all lived in tents they were all trying to find that land of promise okay so look at this it's the faith of a man but it is also the faith of his descendants. So faith of many generations. What are they all believing? God has promised my father that he is going to give us an inheritance. So what is happening? <coughs> Abraham is moving towards that. Abraham is dead and gone. Isaac is moving towards that. Jacob is also searching towards that. And we know that the children of Israel, Moses later led them into the land of Canaan. But you know, there were generations who were living in tents and they were moving towards the promise. They were moving towards the promise. All right. So let's do one thing. Let's take a break. We've run out of time. We'll come back and complete this chapter. Um, we'll meet at 10 o'clock. Okay. So uh, let's break for now. Thank you.